creating a clear hollow casting using crystal clear urethane resin. In today's video, we're going to show you how to create a hollow yet clear and transparent casting such as this one right here. Now, a project like this does bring several challenges with itself, and we need to understand that the mold we're casting into has to have a gloss finish in order for our castings to be transparent. Otherwise, we're going to end up with castings that are matte and finish and not see through at all. Our project today does have several goals. First off, we want to show you how to create a hollow yet clear and lightweight casting that is exceptionally durable and strong. We're going to show you how to minimize the air entrapment in the crystal clear, as well as how to save money by creating hollow castings that are lightweight versus solid ones that are heavy and use up a lot of material and cost as well as how to process a snap cure material like the crystal clear for rotational casting. Now let's just jump into this project and see how it's done. The crystal clear is a water clear urethane casting resin that it was designed for casting at very specific thicknesses and has what is known as a snap cure. Now our challenge is to use this product to do a rotational casting, which is not what is originally intended for. While rotational casting materials have a gradual cure profile that allows us to keep the material inside the mold moving around until it sets up, a snap cure material has a fast cure profile and it goes from a liquid to a solid state in a very short period. This means that if we have too much material in the mold slumping around and the material working time expires, it's going to set up and create a thick area in our casting. To avoid this issue, we recommend to add just enough material to the inside of the mold so you can cover the entire inside, but not have too much material that it's slumping around so that when the material does set up, the inside of the mold is evenly coated and give us an even thickness throughout our casting. There is a number of different materials that is specifically formulated for this type of rotational casting and gradual cure application. However, none of them are transparent and will lend themselves good to our specific project here. So we're gonna opt out in using a snap cure product, which is the crystal clear for our application because of the project needs that we need to meet. We're gonna be using the crystal clear 202 there is several different products in this series. The 202 is developed for castings that are less than half an inch in thickness. Now, because this material is designated an industrial product, we do need to follow the proper handling instructions, which are outlined in the technical bulletin here. Therefore, I will be wearing the proper respirator when handling this material. Again, we're using the 202 today because we are looking for faster setting material. This has a pot life of nine minutes, which will work out great for our application of rotationally casting the material. It also has a mix ratio of 100A to 90B by weight. And the shore hardness for the material is a 80D. When selecting a mold rubber for your project, you should always consult with the technical bullet. And here you can see that the crystal clear calls for a specific molding rubber. And we're gonna use a Moldstar 30 glove mold for the crystal clear that we're working with today. You can use a urethane rubber mold. Just remember, you do need to use a release agent, which could potentially change the surface finish and the clarity of our casting. And since we're looking for the best quality in our casting, we're going to vacuum the gas as the technical bulletin prescribes to minimize any kinds of air bubbles that are gonna be visible in our final product. Now I'm planning to do a rotational casting and as such I'm already anticipating spilling some of that material out of the mold. Now I don't want the crystal clear which is a urethane resin to stick to our uh, support shell which is also made out of a urethane resin. So for that we're going to apply some universal release agent to the support shell to minimize any possibility of the resin sticking to our support shell. 
Also, the proper respirator is now applied before dispensing any of the material. Because the material is a by weight mix ratio, we do need to use an accurate gram scale. I'm going to stick to the formula for the mix ratio and dispense 100 grams of the part A and then dispense 90 grams of the part B. I'm going to combine the two components in a clean mixing container and keep in mind the working time is nine minutes. Mix the two together, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom of the mixing container, making sure the two components are well integrated. We're going to use a metal mixing tool or a plastic mixing tool for working with the crystal clear. This will minimize the chance of moisture contamination with the material in case there is high moisture in the air and it can collect in the actual wooden mixing sticks. And then we're going to vacuum the gas to crystal clear before pouring it into the mold. And if you're not familiar with vacuum degassing of materials, you can click on the link above and that will take you to a video uh, made specifically for vacuum degassing of materials that will go into depth on this process because there is a process that we like to follow. And once I see the material rise and fall, I'm going to wait another 90 seconds with keeping the working time, the pot life in mind. And then once the material is out of the vacuum chamber, we can start the rotational casting process. I'm simply going to pour the crystal clear into the mold. And then while looking inside the mold, which we have the benefit of doing because it has a large opening, we can check and make sure that the resin that we're using is coating the entire inside so that all surfaces have a coating of the crystal clear. After that, we're going to spin the mold in a 360 degree away to make sure that the resin is coating the entire inside. And we're going to continue doing that until the material has set up. So again, keep in mind that because we're using the crystal clear for rotational casting here, we are minimizing the amount of material that is applied to the inside walls of this mold, which is going to also minimize the exotherm of the material which in turn will prolong the working time of the material itself. So instead of a regular nine minute working time as per technical bulletin, you can expect more of a 14 to 15 minute working time when it's applied in this manner. I find that um, the biggest secret to rotational casting is that uh, you're gonna do it in a few layers. So you're going to apply a couple of different batches and the batch should be just as much material to cover the inside, but not have too much that is just slumping in the mold constantly. As you have noticed, I'm not catching any of the extra resin that we're spilling over the edge of our mold and trying to put it back inside the mold. If we were to catch the resin and then pour it back into our mold, in that process, there's going to be a lot of air bubbles introduced to that material that are going to end up in the casting itself. And to minimize that possibility, we're not going to use that extra material. After the material has stopped moving, we're going to put the mold upside down like this, just in case any of the material is still moving. It doesn't end up slumping to the top of our casting or the top of the head rather down and out of the mold. This will minimize the chance of creating a thickened area at the bottom or the top of the head of our casting. We're going to allow the material a partial cure for 30 minutes before applying the next layer. To dispense our second layer of material, we're going to follow the same dispensing instructions as we did previously. Just like we did on the first layer, to minimize the air bubble entrapment in the material, we're going to vacuum degas the material before pouring it into the mold. Just like in the previous layer, we're going to spin the mold in a 360 degree way to make sure that all the surfaces on the inside are coated with a layer of material. 
Now, if you have made a hollow or rotational casting before, you probably notice that the area around the opening of the mold or the bottom of your casting tends to be a little thinner. And that's why I'm focusing on this area and bringing material to the edge and spilling it over to make sure that material buildup there is even in thickness as throughout the casting itself. The strength of our project here will depend on the thinnest area. So we want to make sure to spread the material and create an even thickness all throughout. The ultimate thickness that we're aiming for this project is about 3 16 of an inch or somewhere between 4 or 5 millimeter. That will give us sufficient strength for a small hollow rotational casting object like this. After the material has stopped moving, we can put the mold down and allow it a partial cure of 30 minutes before applying more material. I can go ahead and dispense my third and final batch. We're going to follow the same procedure as we did on the previous two layers. After the vacuum degassing process, we can then pour the material into the mold. And again, continue the rotational casting process of spinning the mold around and making sure you coat all the um, surfaces on the inside of the mold. And here you can see again that I'm focusing on that edge of our casting, making sure to spill some of the material right over the edge to make sure that that edge of the casting is going to be nice and strong all throughout. Now that the entire inside of the mold is coated with a layer of the resin, we're going to continue spinning the mold in a 360 degree fashion so that we can achieve the ultimate thickness we are looking for for this project, which is about 3 16 of an inch or 4 to 5 millimeters. If you need additional material to achieve that thickness, you can always add additional layers to your casting. Now the handling time for the material is 90 minutes as prescribed by the technical bulletin. But since we applied several thin layers, I'm going to give it some extra time to cure. So instead of 90 minutes, we're going to allow it two hours to cure before demolding. After the cure, we can go ahead and demold our casting. And since this is a glove mold, this is a Moldstar 30 glove mold. We can simply peel the mold away to reveal our casting. The mold copied all the detail, including the glossy surface, onto our casting. The casting turned out successful, and I'm very happy the way that it actually turned out with a minimal to no air bubble trap in the final casting. To finalize our casting, we're simply going to trim away some of the flashing at the bottom of the casting itself. I can simply sand the bottom off to reveal an equal casting thickness all throughout the edge of our casting here. Now the red mark you see underneath the measuring tape was put there by me so we can easily contrast the measuring tape against the uh, casting thickness which is about 3 16 of an inch or 4 to 5 millimeters. This assures us that we don't have a weak point around the bottom of the casting itself. And here you can see the final result of the rotational casting off the crystal clear. Now this uh, casting or the mold itself had a lot of detail. That's why it's not completely see-through, but you can see it mimics glass very well. And uh, you can actually see through to the other side. While there will be some minimal air bubble trapment in the casting, Overall, we minimized the air bubbles in the material by uh, vacuum degassing the material before the rotational casting process began. So we eliminated a lot of that air in the material to produce a casting that mimics glass very well and actually looks like glass. For comparison reasons, we went ahead and casted one of these castings solid. And when we put it on the gram scale, it shows 3,400 grams of total weight of material. 
that shows you how much product would be necessary to cast one of these castings as solid. Now, to compare that to a hollow casting, which weighs only 331 grams. So you can see that the cost savings on material are tremendous when comparing hollow castings to solid ones. This weight comparison here shows us that we can do 10 castings of 331 grams of hollow versus one solid casting of 3,400 grams. So you can see that by casting this project hollow allowed us to save 90% of material cost what we would have consumed if we casted this as a solid casting. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you would like to give your own project a go and need some materials, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. And there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create these lightweight, yet see-through and hollow castings. Now, let's just take a quick look at our project goals. We're able to create a hollow, yet clear, lightweight casting that is exceptionally strong and durable. We showed you how to minimize the air entrapment in the crystal clear so we don't end up with air bubbles in the casting. We showed you how to save money by creating hollow castings that are lightweight versus solid ones that eat up a lot of material, as well as how to process a snap cure material like the crystal clear for rotational casting. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos. Remember to subscribe.